In this video, we will discuss Spam Blocker. We will cover what Spam Blocker is, how it functions, and when you would want to use it. We will also talk about the Spam Blocker engine and then demonstrate how to configure Spam Blocker and troubleshoot any issues that you might have with it. Let's get started. Everyone hates spam. It clogs up our mailboxes and wastes time and resources. Spam can even be malicious when the user receives a phishing email or an email containing a virus. To protect your users from spam, WatchGuard offers the Spam Blocker security service. Spam Blocker runs on your WatchGuard Firebox and uses a cloud-based service to score email as spam or not spam. Spam Blocker can scan email using any of the three major protocols, SMTP, IMAP, and POP3, but the options for how we handle detected spam in each protocol do differ a little, as we will see later in the video. Spam Blocker is primarily designed to scan and protect incoming email from unknown senders on the internet. If you have an internal mail server like Exchange, Spam Blocker can scan the incoming email using SMTP. If users in your environment just use a mail client to connect to an external mail server, Spam Blocker can also scan this email as long as it is being transmitted using IMAP or POP3. Spam Blocker can scan outgoing mail as well. However, most environments will not do this because outgoing mail is usually considered trusted. If you use a cloud-based email service like Office 365, SpamBlocker can still add an additional layer of spam protection. For this to work, you must point your MX records at your Firebox so the Firebox has a chance to scan your email before it is sent to the cloud service. For more information on integrating with Office 365, refer to the integration guide in the WatchGuard Help Center. WatchGuard updated the engine the Spam Blocker service uses in order to best protect your email. The new engine is available in FireWare version 12.5.4 and higher. If you are using an older model on the 12.1 branch, you can also use the new engine in FireWare 12.1.4 and higher as well. Along with the new engine, we have made some changes to how Spam Blocker is configured. Don't worry, it's easier than ever to get Spam Blocker up and running. The new engine uses a cloud-based service to scan and process the email, not just the header file. This means that every email we need to scan is sent to the cloud to be scored. There are a few things to know about how this works. Your Firebox will only send the first 100 kilobytes of the email body to the cloud service, and all communication to the cloud servers are encrypted using TLS. Our cloud service does temporarily store emails in order to help score and protect future emails, but emails we store are automatically deleted from the cloud after 30 days. As we will see later in this video, you can choose which region your emails are stored in if needed for GDPR or other privacy regulations. Here we are in my WatchGuard Firebox. I will be using the web UI to demonstrate how Spam Blocker is configured, but you can certainly use the WatchGuard System Manager if you prefer. I have already expanded Firewall on the left and selected my Firewall Policies, which you can see here. I have created two SMTP proxy policies, one for handling incoming email and one for handling outgoing email. Before we dive into Spam Blocker, I want to highlight a few settings that you can configure in the incoming SMTP proxy in order to help protect against spam and spoofed emails. I will click my incoming SMTP proxy here and then navigate to the Proxy Action tab to look at the proxy settings. The first setting is under Address, then Mail From. Here I have added a rule to match any email addresses at my domain name, and I have set this to deny. This rule will deny any email that is arriving from the internet, but contains my domain in the envelope sender address. This helps stop spoofed emails. The second setting is also under address, then recipient two. I have edited the default allow rule and added a wildcard with my email domain 
instead of just using a catch-all wildcard. This rule ensures that any email I am receiving from the internet must have my domain in the envelope recipients. This prevents email from being relayed through my mail server. The last setting is under headers. I have added a new rule at the top of the list for the from header, then a wildcard with my email domain, and I have set this to drop. This rule ensures that any email I am receiving from the internet cannot have my domain in the from header. This also helps stop spoofed emails. If you have multiple email domains, you will need to add additional rules to these three locations in order to cover them all. Remember, these settings should only be applied to incoming email and not outgoing, or they will block legitimate mail. Now let's take a look at SpamBlocker. I will expand Subscription Services on the left and select SpamBlocker. Since I have not enabled SpamBlocker yet, I will want to proceed through the activation wizard. The first step is choosing which existing proxies I want to enable SpamBlocker for. Since I only need to scan incoming email, I will uncheck my outgoing SMTP proxy and then click Next. Now SpamBlocker asks me if I want to create any additional proxies for the other protocols that it can scan. I will select both POP3 and IMAP to create new proxies for these protocols and enable SpamBlocker in them. After that, I'm all done. I can click Finish and I'll be taken to the SpamBlocker management page. In this table, we can see a list of all proxy actions configured on the Firebox. In the Firewall Policies column, we can see which proxy policies these proxy actions are used in, and in the Status column, we can see if SpamBlocker is enabled for those proxies. Let's start by looking at our incoming SMTP proxy. I will select the incoming proxy in the list and click Configure to open those settings. You could also edit the proxy from the Firewall Policies list if you prefer. First, we can choose the action that SpamBlocker will take when a spam email is detected. This defaults to Deny, which will let the sender know that we refused the message. You can also choose to allow the spam through. You can add a spam tag to the email subject line. This will deliver the email but alert the user that it is spam. Or you can drop the email, which will discard it without informing the sender but this could cause the sender to attempt to resend the email later. You can also quarantine the email by sending it to the WatchGuard quarantine server, which must be configured separately. For more information about the quarantine server, refer to the WatchGuard Help Center. The second option here defines what SpamBlocker will do with incoming email when the cloud service is not reachable. This defaults to allow but you can change this to deny if you prefer. Keep in mind that if the service is unavailable, it will cause SpamBlocker to deny all incoming email, not just spam. We can also generate log messages for spam emails and everything else by selecting these options. If we click the SpamBlocker Exceptions tab, we can see a few default rules already in place to allow email from WatchGuard. If SpamBlocker is incorrectly flagging email, you can always create an exception to define how it should be handled. This can be used to allow specific senders or domains through SpamBlocker, regardless of the spam score. Or you can also create rules to apply other actions to email if required. It is important to note that when we are adding SpamBlocker exceptions, we must use the email addresses contained in the envelope not the mail from and to headers. The envelope addresses will be recorded in the internet headers of any email scanned by SpamBlocker. In Outlook, you can open a message and go to File, then Properties to take a look. Locate X WatchGuard Mail From and X WatchGuard Mail Recipients. You can also find the envelope addresses in the SpamBlocker log messages. Expand the dashboard and open the traffic monitor then search for spam to locate these logs. Here we can see the spam blocker settings 
for my IMAP proxy. We can configure what happens when spam is detected and when the service is unavailable, just like the SMTP proxy. However, with IMAP, when email is classified as spam, we only have the option to allow the email or add a subject tag. This is due to how email is sent over the IMAP protocol. We simply have fewer ways that we can manipulate it. Here we can see the spam blocker settings for my POP3 proxy. Just like the IMAP proxy, we can only choose to allow spam or add a subject tag when spam is detected. Again, this is due to how email is sent over POP3. If you are using the IMAP or POP3 proxies, we recommend adding mail rules to the user's email client to automatically move or delete emails containing this subject tag. In both the IMAP and POP3 proxies, we can also add spam blocker exceptions as needed. Back on the spam blocker management page, there is a button for global spam blocker settings. If we click this, we can configure two things. If you are using an HTTP proxy server in your network that spam blocker must send traffic through, you can configure the settings here. However, most environments will want to leave this disabled or it could cause spam blocker to become unreachable. Under advanced, you can choose the data center that your email will be sent to. By default, spam blocker will attempt to use the closest data center to your location, but you can require it to only use one region if you need to meet GDPR or other privacy regulations. So what can we do if spam blocker isn't working? To start with, since spam blocker is connecting to a cloud server, that connection must be functional for a spam blocker to score email. This means the Firebox must be able to resolve DNS and send HTTPS traffic out to the internet. If you need to diagnose an issue with the spam blocker service in the Firebox, you can expand the dashboard and open the traffic monitor. If you search for CT spam, this will locate any log messages related to the spam blocker process. You may also need to increase the diagnostic log level for security subscriptions in order to obtain the most information. If spam blocker is incorrectly scoring emails, either a false positive or false negative, you can send the email to WatchGuard to notify us and improve the scoring. First, you must save the email in question to your file system as either an MSG or EML file, and then attach this file to a new email and send it to one of the email addresses on the screen. In the subject, we recommend including this information in order for your report to be processed correctly. If you are sending multiple email messages, you can add all of the MSG and EML files to a zip archive and send that instead. You must save the spam email as a file and attach it. Just forwarding the spam emails to these WatchGuard addresses will not work. That will do it for getting started with SpamBlocker. In this video, we talked about what SpamBlocker is and how it works. We covered some basic settings in the SMTP proxy for combating spam. Then we looked at how to enable SpamBlocker for the SMTP, IMAP, and POP3 proxies, as well as the options available for each protocol. Finally, we talked about how to troubleshoot spam blocker issues and report email that is scored incorrectly. As always, you can check the WatchGuard technical search for more information.